So I wanted to try to share in under five minutes my plan to grow to $2 million and how we plan to do it. So first, there's three steps. The first one is setup. So in setup, I have legal, customer relations, accounting, and acquisitions. So basically, these are all of the things that I'm currently doing and that I don't have anybody else trained on. So for setup, I want to make sure that I can do all of these things while the guys are out working and I can manage the team, but then also have a plan in place to replace myself. And so a good, a good rule of thumb is act as if you're selling the business whenever you're bringing someone on to take over your role. And if you act as if you're selling the business and fully step out of it in a way that the business will keep running without you, because think of it this way, if you go to sell your home and you clean your home and fix up anything that's broken in it, you don't really want to move out anymore. So if you're ever having issues in your business, act as if you're moving out of the business and if you are selling it or scaling it or giving it on to someone else. And as you pass that off, it becomes less supported on you and more supported on systems and on the rest of your team. So in, in that grouping, I have legal, customer relations, accounting, and acquisitions. So for legal, there's things like filing your LLC, making sure that you have insurance, making sure that all of your paperwork is filed, and then under customer relations, so that would be, for instance, in my business, I will be handling all of the phone calls, emails, making sure the customers are satisfied, quality control, um, and then I have accounting. So this will be QuickBooks. This is something that I really struggle with and haven't done a very good job on. You can get QuickBooks self-employed um, if you're really, really small. I would recommend getting QuickBooks online. That way you can get it on a laptop, you can get it on a desktop, you can even get it on your phone. And so in order to, with, with that, you can go and just take a picture of your receipts and then at the end of each day, just scroll through and hit approve for each receipt that's correct and it'll group them all for you. And if they're grouped improperly, then you can just regroup them. Most things you can learn within about 20 hours of studying. So if you watch 20 hours of YouTube videos on accounting, you're gonna have it really good. And so that's something that I need to work on and that I have not studied just because the repetitiveness of it is something that I don't like and that I kind of push push against. And so that's something that I need to work on. The last thing is acquisitions. So you're also going to be the one that is gonna be purchasing the trucks, hiring people, purchasing land, all of these things are things that you will be doing in the beginning of your business. Under $2 million, you'll probably still be doing them. You will pass off customer relations first. After that, you'll probably pass off accounting, then legal, and then acquisitions. You're going to be hiring people until you pass, like that's the last thing that you're gonna be passing off is hiring and training your team. The next thing that I have on the, on the three items is systematize. So I want to come up with a process of quickly scaling. This is gonna be scaling your equipment, team, customers, and support. So for equipment, I want to find a way to quickly scale. The best way that I've found to be able to quickly scale equipment is to have customer funded projects. So what this basically means is a customer pays up front for a product, you take that money that they pay up front to fulfill the product on the back end. So normally things, like you have labor, things like that, that normally customers can pay up front to cover. This will be things like equipment that normally you would have before a customer hires you. And that's why it's called customer funding. So your business will be customer funded. The thing that you have to make sure to do though, if someone asks for a refund, you need to be able to give it to them. And so when you're funding from the customer, you also have to have a pretty large security fund just to be able to fall back on to if there is an issue or in, in the instance that something goes wrong. Make sure you have good insurance and make sure that you have just kind of an emergency backup bumper fund. And so for us, we like to try to keep about a month into our um, emergency fund. Right now we're below that, um, but it, it's just a good rule of thumb to have it one, one to six months, three months is probably best. Um, and so scaling equipment, that will be customer funded. So our goal is to sell 100 customers, buy all the equipment, and then the next on the list is team. So equipment, we have the, we have the setup, that's after we find 100 customers, have the setup, and then team. So we try to find two guys. Normally one of those two guys is not gonna work out. But if they do, then great. We're gonna put two guys into a truck. If one of them calls out sick, if one of them doesn't show up, we still have that crew running where I'm not trying to hop out in the field and fix that. So through that, we're able to take two people, Fred and Joe, stick them in a truck. Joe doesn't show up one day, truck keeps going. So we basically have a one-man crew with two guys in it. We pick the best out of those two guys. Joe might have to go. 
friend might have to go, but we keep this truck running regardless. And so what we can do with that as well is say both candidates work out and you only had a 75% um, filled route, you can bring in 25 new properties and book out for both guys. You just have to make sure to have a backup plan if Fred or Joe or Fred and Joe both don't show up. So through doing that, then you need customers and you need support. So the support is if you have 500 customers that you're managing, I'm not going to be able to answer the phone for all of them. So you have to make sure to have a system of, okay, we have 500 customers, we need someone to not answer the phone. And that goes back to step one where I might pass off customer relations, but I'll keep accounting, hiring, and legal. And so slowly you pass those off until you get down to just acquisitions. Once you get down to acqu just acquisitions, hiring, purchasing trucks, things like that, then you normally pass off last and you begin acquiring companies. And so you begin acquiring whether there are other companies just like yours and you combine them or whether there are other business ventures and then it becomes more of an investment um, when you fully step out of the business. The last thing is scale. So now that you're customer funded, you found a way to hire employees. And so like we try Indeed, we like to put out a Facebook and Nextdoor ad and then also put out an ad on Indeed. You can also call, a lot of times there's local companies where they'll take college students or people who can't find jobs. Like here in town, we have a place called New Hire. For about 15 to $20 an hour, you can hire someone that already has insurance, they've already had a background check, they've already had a drug test. And so they have all these things that have already been done to kind of vet them out in advance. They interview them for you. You can interview them um, or you can just have them send them out. You try them out, after the first day you can message them. They won't send them back out, they'll send out a new person or you can keep them long-term and hire them outright. So that's something that you can try when scaling your team. And then um, with scaling customers and equipment, you wanna have a really, really good offer. I recommend the book $100 Million Offers by Alex Ramosi. Listen to the clean version. Um, but you can listen to that book and that can help you kind of lay out your offer. Our offer is a subscription package. You can look at it on our Facebook account. And so we brought our acquisition costs from $240 per customer all the way down to like five dollars and so when we want 100 customers 500 bucks and we've got that 100 customers a lot of times it ends up being even less than that then under equipment and team once again your equipment is funded by the customer and then your team is the last thing so you need to find a really good hiring system a lot of times the best rule of thumb is to look at hiring a team just like acquiring a customer you need to advertise to that team member. You need to show the value to that team member. And so you just need to prove to that team member that you're the best fit for them. So you can watch another video to find out the best questions to ask that team member. And that'll be a video that I'll be posting in a few days. Good luck with your business. This is our plan to grow to $2 million.